Well, the norm has always been that uh, when a gentleman takes a lady out, they have to pull the chair. When they get to the car, he has to open the door. But things have changed nowadays with women empowerment. Uh, women are opening doors for fellow women, especially in technology. And Elizabeth Atkunda, Head for Risk and Compliance, Yo Uganda, is here to open doors for other women to know that they too can actually make their stand in technology, especially FinTech in Uganda. Good morning to you, Elizabeth. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Okay. So let's talk about Yo Uganda. First of all, we want to come to an understanding understanding of what Yo Uganda is, what solution were you trying to provide uh, when you came up with this? Yo Uganda is a mobile technological solution service provider that was uh, established in 2006. So under the, uh, the National Payments Act that recently assented to act, we are payment service operators, meaning we provide platforms for payment services like mobile money, person-to-person -person, um, services, bank-to-person and such and such. We also have uh, customers that prefer or request to have personally curated services on top of what we do. We also provide SMS, bulk SMS services, voice recognition services, such, such and such. Okay, yeah. all right. So the company has been in existence for 15 years. What are the successes that you have uh, you registered as the company? As a company, we are a pioneer in this field, I'd like to say. And uh, it has been groundbreaking for us to get into a space where other companies had not really gotten into. We have been operating before being licensed by Bank of Uganda and after being licensed by Bank of Uganda. We are proud to say that when, for instance, um, Stanby can um, MTN had an, an agreement to have money transfer services between their two platforms. We were one of the companies that were selected to provide those services. And uh, above that, we do pride ourselves in having encouraged women women-based initiatives. For instance, uh, 40 Days 40 Fintechs, Women in Fintechs ha Hackathon, sorry, things like that that have meant that we have made it easier for different Fintechs and women-led Fintechs in particular to break into the boys club. Okay, all right. And again, in those 15 years, there's always the ups, but there's also the downs. So what mm -hmm. have been the downs for you to actually continue breaking through and being dominant in the fintech industry? Well, I would like to say that uh, one of the um, downs has been people's understanding or acceptance of what fintech is. Many times people will say, okay, this is 2022 and we're all moving forward, everything is tech. But there is people, especially the underserved, people who may not be in the middle or to upper class levels, that have trouble appreciating or understanding how fintech can change their lives. So you find that they are slower to adopt to these new changes. When um, I was listening to a writer that says that the world needs banking but not necessarily banks which meant to him that whereas the world does need banking in a certain form mm -hmm. it may change from what we've always known it to be to something different so i feel like perceptions and understanding of what the industry is have been one of the setbacks but also um, there have been various barriers, regulatory barriers, standards that must be upheld, rules that must be followed, which make it a little bit more difficult to operate for various companies, but not impossible, obviously. Okay, yeah. all right. And you, Uganda, as an organization, how have you actually played a role in supporting these women in fintech to better, you know, resolve the whole misunderstanding and misconception of fintech? Well, you, Uganda, is part of many, many, many third parties and direct initiatives with uh, partners like High People, UCDF. We have different initiatives that we follow up with these partners to ensure that what we do and what companies like us do and what this space is for is communicated and understood and also appreciated, especially by women. Mm -hmm. Okay, so unfolding discussions for women leadership in tech, uh, what is being done about that? Well, there is uh, various platforms that have been set up to build these discussions regarding women in tech.
There's been uh, platforms that are multinational, there have been uh, national platforms, there's been spaces in the tech world that encourage these discussions. There is um, efforts by different companies. I mentioned earlier that High People is one of those companies that holds a hackathon for women every year, that has 40 days, 40 fintechs for different various fintechs. These spaces being opened up so that discussions can be had. When it comes to female involvement in particular, those spaces may not be as many because some of these spaces are general discussion spaces. Mm -hmm. But there is still a change, a noted change in the narrative. There are over 70 registered fintechs in Uganda and about 17 or so are female-led or geared towards female solutions. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there is space is being opened up and slowly the narrative is changing okay. when it comes to women in tech. Uh, which then brings us to the conversation of gender equality in free tech, especially in Uganda and women's empowerment in technology. How progressive are we on bringing that number to sort of an equality? Well, when it comes to consumption of fintech services, the number is almost at par. That means there's almost equal men as women consuming fintech services. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the innovative space, being a part of um, the innovators, the pace setters, the change makers, the disparity is quite large. And it can be, it's not too much to say that women's contribution is almost negligible. It's tiny, it's less than a quarter. But it's not surprising because this is a new field, it's a new space. And slowly... And by new, you mean new for women or new generally? New gender? generally. Okay. So you find that different areas, different countries are catching up at different paces. Mm -hmm. So because of that, it's not too much to say that given uh, the women, if we give them a bit of time, they'll catch up, they'll mm -hmm. gain more confidence, mm -hmm. they'll have... Uh, um, a, a space to say, you know what, as women I can start this fintech, I can open this, I can create this particular solution for women and such and such. Okay, all right. And what efforts can be done to actually we inspire women to be a part and parcel of building fintech and also participating in fintech? Women in Uganda in particular, I will say, I, wa I want to emphasize women in Uganda of because <laughs> when you look at women in Africa generally, they are participation of women in fintech is double the global average, meaning in Africa generally, women are showing up. Now when it comes to Uganda, that cannot be said to be true. And I feel like the greatest barrier we have as women into breaking into this space is how we are seen and how we see ourselves. Our background religiously, culturally indicates that this is not a woman's thing. So mentally, from a grassroots level, we do not see it that way. Okay. Uh, from your personal experience, mm -hmm. allow me to just go personal here with you. Mm -hmm. uh, when you say we are not seen and we don't see ourselves, uh, could mm -hmm. you please relate this to yourself and the journey that you have had so far in this particular industry? In this particular industry, I would say that how this relates to me is the time when um, I left banking, because I used to work um, at a bank and then an investments company after that. When I left that space, I looked at FinTech as something that is to, before I got into it or before I understood it, I looked at it as something that is so masculine and so technical and, and full of systems and puzzles and equations, you know, things that might be difficult for me as a female mm -hmm. and as a lawyer to get into. But, when I took a little more interest and started to look at it from the thing that it is and from how it's changing my life and our lives, how I can't go a day without using mobile money, how I can't go a day without using an SMS. This is a part of who we are, so it's inescapable to us. So better you get to learn it, and if you're interested to get involved in it because it is the future, that's how I started to see myself as a part of this industry. But before that, it was all the matrix, I'd say.
Okay. All right. So too many people still believe men take neutral or even better leaders. They make better leaders than the women. Mm -hmm. But we're sl slowly starting to see women in leadership as far as fintech is concerned. And how has that actually been received in terms of uh, support, in terms of funding? Um, the other day we hosted a lady who is in the film industry and she's a producer, but she, has, she owns her own film company. And she was told that if you're going to lobby for funding for the film that you want to make, you may want to have a man by your That's side true. in that meeting room. Is That's that the stage true. for you in fintech? Well, for fintech, oh, there is, um, I'd like to say, uh, it, it's, it would be fair to say that much, much of the funding is not geared specifically to women-led fintechs. It's general funding. So, I have not, I have not been aware of or in a situation where there's specific funding mm -hmm. just for women-led fintechs or fintechs that are geared to resolve female issues. So there is no targeted funding for f for the female fintech space, but there is general funding, mm -hmm. and I haven't. I, I I feel that women are right now being able to stand on their own and say send in proposals for funding and things like that without feeling the need to have a man because in this space the participation of women in the space has been put in the forefront we've had so many discussions we've had so many events where the need for women to be a part of this industry has been appreciated so there's no need to feel that oh we must have a man to apply to apply for this grant or whatever the case may be i feel that women in this space are confident enough to stand on their own as women okay. to apply for this financial system. All right, uh, discussing uh, women in technology with Elizabeth Atkunda, who's the risk and compliance head at EU Uganda. Now we have been talking about funding. In regards to funding and supporting mm -hmm. some of these initiatives, how has that been? Because understandably, that is still on the law. So what are the resolutions to actually up the funding for women that are participating actively in technology, mm -hmm. FinTech in Uganda? Well, regular Laterally, I, 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 I can't say there's anything specific, but for as a field in the space, there are incentives that they are not particular, they are not social protection programs as per se, mm -hmm. but they are incentives to women to participate in this field. There are spaces that recognize the participation of women, mm -hmm. there are spaces that put in the forefront the needs of women in the space. There's there's discussions, there's spaces that focus on solutions that are geared towards women, mm -hmm. right? So I do feel that something has been done, right? Maybe not to the extent that is preferred, but there's been discussions and there's been change and movement and you can see there's a difference okay. from say two years ago. Okay, all right. Uh, the tears that you've mentioned uh, where COVID-19 had hit uh, uh, years, yeah. and I'm sure they, they did dismantle a few things here and there, especially in terms of fintech. Now, how are women in fintech actually managing uh, the post-COVID-19 situation, its mm. crisis and effects thereafter, and also dismantling the whole systematic racial discrimination that could be present? Well, I feel that uh, women post-COVID have learned to appreciate the, the value of fintech because most people have, in one way or the other, been able to survive from those services. So I feel that post-COVID, there's an increased appreciation of the space. Mm -hmm. But then there hasn't been any female targeted resources that have been, say, placed on the side and said this is for women post-COVID fintech. Most of the efforts have been general. The reparations, so to speak, the grants here and there either have been general or to children or to people with disabilities. But women in particular post-COVID in the fintech space, not as much. Okay. But the discussions have been increased. There's more awareness, there's more appreciation, there's more understanding because COVID taught us to appreciate 
what fintech can do. Okay. All right. Let's talk about fairness of women in fintech in terms of what should regulators do, what should governments do, especially within Uganda or even East mm -hmm. Africa, to just better this position for women in fintech. Yeah. I feel, personally, I feel that um, governments could increase sensitization different programs the same way they are doing for financial inclusion generally different programs geared towards this i feel that there should be an effort to create associations for women in fintech that put the voices of the needs of women at the forefront women in fintech should be given positions sorry to use the word should but it would be preferred that they are given positions in places where they can vocalize how women feel. People are only heard by their representatives. So if we have female representatives in places where their voices can be heard, mm. then we shall be heard. I feel that um, it wouldn't be too much to ask to have incentives to women -led, for women-led fintechs because we all know how the financial situation can be and women in particular can be financially disadvantaged. So it would be helpful because then you know that you're supported in this, you're not on your own in this. I feel that uh, from a regulatory perspective, barriers to entry in the industry could be, you know, revised mm -hmm. to encourage more women to participate, not to be afraid, not to think they can't pull it off or they need this or the other, it's too, it's too much, it's overwhelming, to make it easy for women-led fintechs to be a part of this space. Okay. All right. Now, there's a, a young lady that is watching the program. There's a lady who's been having this idea, this concept, and they need, they need to actually bring it to maturity. So in terms of uh, support, if someone needs some mentorship, if someone's looking for funding in fintech, where can they go? Who can they reach out to? Or how can they be a part of mm. the field play? I like to say to every young girl that's looking at this field and wondering what, how to get into it, that one of the best places would be high people. I find that high people focuses on women so much, and especially young girls. If you are watching this program and thinking, how can I get into this space, feel free to approach high people as an organization. Feel free to engage in these discussions and to reach out to females in these spaces because there isn't a single female I've met in the fintech space who's not ready to mentor or to guide or to explain or to be a part of something greater. So to have the courage to approach these organizations and these people and to know that what they feel or what they want to do is absolutely valid. Okay. Impossible. All right. Uh, Elizabeth, you've talked about mentorship. This morning I was having a conversation uh, with someone that I came with to work and we were mm. talking about, you know, women and how we can have cut points in yes. the workspace <laughs> if another woman who has a position of leadership mm. or, you know, position of signature does not like another lady within the same workspace, uh, they, they will do something to frustrate that lady mm. until that one gets to pack up and That's leave. In fintech, isn't that... Uh, uh, one of the barriers that uh, will mm. <laughs> crop through, uh, even if we are talking about mentorship and guidance, mm. woman to woman. I tell you what, I feel that um, the fact that women generally bring other women down is something of, of the days of old, as I speak, you see, because the women I know, the women I deal with, are not that kind of woman. So that means something has changed. There might be one or two, I don't know, but mm -hmm. the women I deal with in this space and in my world generally are not that kind of woman. So the fact that the, the, the narrative that women pull each other down all the time is not exactly valid right now. Maybe it used to be, but not that much. Women have grown and we've learned that we need each other to succeed. If we pull each other down, then what? So the fintech space in particular is not that kind of space. Not to my experience anyway. Okay. All right. And in your parting shots, as uh, we get to have uh, women in fintech growing and expanding leaps and bounds in Uganda, what is your word of encouragement? What is that one 
thing that you can say to a woman who's wanting to participate is participating but perhaps struggling or wants to actually push beyond the quote-unquote boundaries to be able to be dominant in fintech? I would like to say um, to the women who are trying to get involved in this space that fintech is not a boys club. Fintech is the future. Fintech is for all of us. And being involved in it will not make you any less female or, or will, will not reduce your impact on the world as a female at all. I'd like to encourage women to get involved in different positions. You, if it's starting a fintech, that's fine. If it's providing legal services, if it's providing if it's operations, if it's IT, whatever the case is, I'd like to offer a word of encouragement and say that fintech is the future. So if you feel that this is something you could get into, be encouraged to get into it. It can only get better. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for joining us and having this dialogue <laughs> with me. Well, FinTech is the future, and guess what? Mm -hmm. That future is now and today. And you can be actively participatory of that future to make this world a better place for everybody, for the generations to come, most mm -hmm. especially. And so we will continue to look at more conversations regarding women and mental health this morning also. Um, Evelyn Carono is joining us. Uh, General Secretary from the Uganda Counseling Association. Uh, we're going to be talking about how surroundings actually.